Welcome back. I have an interesting little discussion to tell you about. I want to just expose you to one example of organisms that are called photoheterotrophs. Now they're sort of oddballs, you know, we don't talk about them very often. But I wanted to mention one group in particular. They're a group of organisms that are in the genus Halobacterium. Uh, I just think that they're fascinating. So I just wanted to mention them to you just so you can have that to contrast with some of the other types of organisms we've been talking about. Now, Halobacterium, and one of them, for example, is Halobacterium halobium, are a type of archaeal cell. So they're prokaryotic cells. They're called an obligate halophile, which means that they must live in salty environments. Matter of fact, amazingly enough, these organisms can grow right on salt blocks that are used to provide salt to cattle and horses. In the evaporation pans, the evaporation basins that are in the Estancia Plain, east of the mountains here, where it's a very, very salty environment, Halobacterium does wonderfully there. They grow on the west coast of Australia in hypersaline, very, very salty pools of water where the salt is already crusted around the edge of the pool. The other interesting thing about them is that they have beautiful colors. They're colors that range from sort of reddish purples to pinkish orange to uh, yellowish purples. They have wonderful range of colors. Matter of fact, when they grow in the environment, they create bands of color in these hypersaline environments. Next time you see somebody, the uh, field that might have a salt block out for their horses or cattle, if it's one of the white ones, take a look at it, especially if it's been a wet period, and see if it has sort of a, oh, a pinkish or orangish tinge to it. If it does, it's probably Halobacterium. Now, they're interesting also because their membrane has two, distri two distinct regions. They commonly will have what's referred to as their red membrane region. And guess what we find there? A plain old electron transport chain, very similar to the one you have. It's used for doing oxidative phosphorylation. So in that respect, they're like you. They have an electron transport chain. They use it as one of their ways to generate ATPs. They can carry out aerobic respiration. They use oxygen as their final electron acceptor. But they also have other regions in their membrane that are called their purple membrane. And there you have concentrated a molecule called bacteriorhodopsin. Bacteriorhodopsin. If you've had an AMP class you know, some previous time, then you might recognize that rhodopsin name, and you'll see why in a moment. It's a key part of this story. Now, these organisms are photoheterotrophs. So these are organisms that attain some of their energy from light energy. They do a type of photophosphorylation. But when they're looking for carbon to build more of their molecules, they get the carbon from other organic molecules. That's the heterotroph part. All right? So they have this interesting mix of process. As a matter of fact, we could call these halobacterium a type of mixotroph. You could argue that they're really a photo chemo heterotroph, okay? Now these organisms use light as an energy source, but they are not synthetic, meaning they can't make their own carbohydrates from raw materials. So they can't do photosynthesis. Now some organisms that are classified as bacteria can also carry out this kind of lifestyle, photoheterotrophs, and they're usually classified as the, glean, uh, the green, excuse me, and purple non-sulfur bacteria. So it's not just archaea, it's just that I'm interested in mentioning to you one particular group, which are these halobacteria, which are archaea. Now, here's the kind of organization of molecules that they have in their membrane. Now, remember, I already mentioned that you would expect them to have an electron transport chain, and that would be in a different part of their membrane. But in this part of their membrane, we find that they have a very simple kind of arrangement. They have clusters of the molecules, bacterial rhodopsin, and they also have ATP synthase next to them. Here's the interesting thing that bacteria rhodopsin can do. It can act as a proton pump all by itself. This pigment molecule, remember it provides color to the organism, it's part of what's called the purple membrane region of the molecule. This pigment molecule is called bacteria rhodopsin. Remember what we said pigments do, they absorb light energy. Here's the fascinating thing about this bacteria rhodopsin. Bacteria rhodopsin, as it absorbs light energy, it changes shape all by itself. No electrons involved. 
the molecule grabs hydrogen ions as it absorbs light energy, changes shape, and pulls those hydrogen ions across a membrane. So it's a proton pump that's directly powered by light energy. You see how that changes the whole idea that we talked about in the type of photophosphorylation with an electron transport chain. This isn't chemiosmosis. There's no electron transport chain. It is a type of photophosphorylation because we're using light energy to power the production of ATPs. Once that bacterial rhodopsin moves the hydrogen ions across the membrane, they're going to flow back through ATP synthase. All right? So, absorption of the light energy, a direct proton pumping. We find this kind of system in these, in these organisms called halobacteria. And as I mentioned before, you might see them referred to as hyperhalophiles or obligate halophiles. They like, they need very salty environments. Now, this is a type, as we mentioned, of photophosphorylation. But notice some of the differences with the type of photophosphorylation we talked about before. There's no final electron acceptor, right? Well, if you think about it, there's no electrons flowing anywhere. So why do I need a final electron acceptor? ATPs do indeed get produced. Remember, it's photophosphorylation, but there's no photolysis, right? I mean, if there's no electrons moving, why do I need photolysis to replace any electrons? Also, there's no NADPH made. Remember, these are organisms that aren't synthetic organisms. They can't synthesize their own organic molecules, so producing NADPH is not something associated with this process. There's no chemiosmosis. If there's no electron transport chain, then there can't be this event that we've been talking about as chemiosmosis. Remember, chemiosmosis, the way we defined it, is an electron transport chain creating a proton gradient, ATP synthase using that proton mode of force to generate ATPs. We have part of chemiosmosis, don't we? We have the ATP synthase. But the thing generating the proton gradient, the thing that pumps the hydrogen ions across the membrane, is not an electron transport chain anymore. It's this bacterial rhodopsin. So you can see it doesn't quite fit the definition of chemiosmosis, but it does fit a definition of photophosphorylation. Of course, since there's no NADPH being made, we wouldn't expect this to be so associated with any kind of photosynthetic process. No carbohydrates are being produced. Interesting mechanism, isn't it? It just shows you one of the many variations we see among different kinds of organisms. I only bring it to your attention just to show you that those categories that we talked about before, the ways in which we've been discussing these ideas, doesn't cover the entire range of variability out there in the living world. Here's just one example of an organism that does something a little bit different than the way we've typically thought about this process of photophosphorylation. So we said we were talking about this special group of archaea called halobacterium. We mentioned that they're an extreme halophile. They live in some very harsh environments, extremely salty environments, much, much saltier than the saltiness of the ocean. Light energy is indeed used, and there are pigment molecules involved. So there is absorption of light energy and a molecule gaining some of that energy. But remember what that bacterial rhodopsin did? it changed shape. Here's the interesting feature. The cells in the retina of your eye also have a type of rhodopsin molecule. You see, you have vision because of this molecule doing basically the same thing. I open my eyes, light energy hits my retina, causes my rhodopsin molecules to change shape. They pump ions across the membrane. That triggers a neural response. So our vision is based upon the same basic kind of mechanism, a pigment molecule absorbing light energy and creating a hydrogen ion gradient. But in the case of our retinal cells, it generates an electrical impulse, a neural impulse, not ATPs. Interesting how these organisms, these prokaryotes, and we eukaryotes, have used a similar kind of molecule to carry out a similar kind of event, absorb light energy, create a proton gradient. Also, we said that there's no electrons involved in this. There's no electron flow, no electron transport chain. It's not chemiosmosis. It doesn't have the complete components of chemiosmosis, but it is a type of photophosphorylation. 
And we classify this organism as being either a mixotroph or a type of photoheterotroph. Well, I hope you found this interesting. And also, I'd like you to look around. See if you see any examples of these organisms growing in the local environment. Remember what you need to look for, a very salty environment that has some moisture, and then you'll probably find some of these hollow bacteria present. Thanks very much. Look forward to talking to you next time.